I thought I would just read you a very quick bit of what we were doing, why we were out there. So this is in Hong Kong. A few of the crew go ashore in the small hours to buy DVDs and compare the prices of electrical goods. Um, we have four, and then there was a typhoon, and we picked up everybody else's stuff. So we leave at Hong Kong Harbour, close to full at 4 a.m., and leave fully laden, weighing 115,000 tonnes. Much of the cargo is meant for other ships, but they've all run rather than face the typhoon, so we've picked up their stuff. We have four cylindrical 40-foot tanks in the bow, labelled Super Heavy Danger Benzyl Alcohol Made in India, Destination Los Angeles. Siren says we have a lot of frozen shrimp in the reefers, close to 1,000 tonnes. Quite a prawn cocktail. The manifest, which the company releases months later, says America has ordered, and this is just one ship, 600 tons of televisions and phones from Hong Kong, along with 300 tons of computers, 20 tons of clocks and watches, 95 tons of books and magazines, 14 tons of batteries, 16 tons of parts for cars and bikes. American families will inspect 400 tons of handbags, wallets and school bags and wash with 10 tons of soap. American children will play with 500 tons of toys. American aesthetes may make a distinction between art, antiques, collector's pieces and bric-a-brac, but we do not, lumping three tons of them together in one 40-foot container. For Mexico, we had 17 tons of computers and 100 tons of electronics to be transshipped in Los Angeles. The load of the night is four tons of aircraft, spacecraft and parts thereof, made in India, most likely for an aircraft manufacturer, but just possibly for NASA. And what's astonishing about it is the seafarers give their lives to carrying these boxes and they don't know what's in them. They get told what's the dangerous, flammable stuff that's kept in the bow as far away as possible because they need to know in case it goes off. And we practiced firefighting drills where the captain is the brain, he stays on the bridge, the first mate is the fists, which is what a mate always was, he goes down and directs the operation, and the Filipinos are the smoke jumpers in their hoods and they go forward to do the dying, essentially, and save the ship. And there is... So you don't know about anything else, and they say it was because they thought that in case we steal it, um, except for the stuff that has to be kept cold. So on the North Atlantic, with ice on the sea and the whole thing rocking and horizontal blizzard, my cabin mate next door, Nesta, was climbing a ladder three stories up every four hours to check the frozen shrimp was still frozen. Um, so, you know, if you order Thai prawns, as we did this evening, make sure you eat all of them, you know. Because most of them have travelled much better than we have. And the same thing goes for milk. I mean, we were carrying milk that had been pulled out of cows in Argentina, shipped to Antwerp, so that's a long way across the South Atlantic, and it was now being transshipped back to Canada in the middle of the winter. So that milk was better travelled than most people I know. Milk! And it's not because they don't have cows in Canada, you know. It actually makes sense economically for us to rear chickens in Denmark, send them to China to be filleted, and then bring the fillets back to eat. And um, when you ask why, they said because the freight rates are so low. So that was the other side of this, was it revealed that the world that we live in, as if we didn't know it, has no controlling mind. There's no sensible person at the top making decisions. It's chaotic um, kind of dictatorship of the lowest price. Um, and the result, we all know, is catastrophic. I mean, if shipping were a country, it would be the seventh most polluting country in the world. Um, and they don't like it. They don't like it any more than we do. But what are they going to do? And this is why they allowed me to write the book, they said, was because they said, we are globalization. Without us, it doesn't happen. And yet, we ask questions about it in silence, more or less. You know, no, there's no interaction, really, between land and sea. So that's kind of what I've been doing, is roaming around like the ancient mariner and giving these wild-eyed talks to kind and attentive people like you. Um, so thank you very much. Oh.